Kira, and I've been part of the team um, working with um, colleagues in CWP um, to look at integrating a patient-centred, goal-focused approach to our service. And we're very proud today to be launching the next step, Goal-Based Outcomes Resource. Okay, so um, care and patient-centredness is top of the political agenda in the NHS at the moment. But measuring clinical outcomes, especially in child and adolescent mental health, is still quite difficult and remains a challenge. There's an emphasis on asking young people and their carers and parents um, about what they think about their care. Um, and there's two ways that we do that. One is uh, patient reported outcome measures, which is how effective they think their care has been. And patient reported experience measures, which is how satisfied they are with their care. There's a national organisation based in London called Cork, the CAMS Outcome Research Consortium, and they've come up with several patient-reported outcome measures that CAMS services can use to look at the quality of their care. And CWP decided that they wanted to use goal-based outcomes. So in terms of how goal-based outcomes work, um, they are a way in which the um, person that comes for help can define at the start of treatment where they think they are at um, in terms of their progress made towards their goal. So in this instance, someone might say they're at a four when they start. Um, but then what we're doing as clinicians is we're asking them at the end, and now that we've finished the work, um, where do you think you're at now? So in this, uh, in this instance, it would be an eight. And this is a way that we can find out what service users think about the effectiveness of the care that they've received. But for us, the standout feature of goal-based outcomes is the fact that the goal is set by the person who will be acting on it. And that could, be, that could be the young person, the patient, it could be the family as a whole. So what do we do? Well, last year, uh, we set about introducing training um, and we made our own goal-based outcomes resources, which we trialled in a pilot study across the Trust. Um, we set about capturing the experiences of young people that use our service and asked them what they thought about goal-based outcomes. We also asked clinicians what they thought. Uh, we did this uh, pilot study in four teams um, across the trust, across the, uh, the geographical area, um, teams working with um, young people between the ages of 0 and 16, 16 to 19, and also young people and clinicians working in inpatient wards. And what we found was that goal-based outcomes provided ownership of goals, a therapeutic focus and a visually powerful approach. So looking to build on these results, we set about creating a resource that would consolidate our findings. We wanted to remain true to the partnership values of goal-based outcomes, and so we took a participatory approach to developing our best practice model. Though the approach is very much about involvement, we deliberately prioritised, during the consultation phase, the needs, expertise, thoughts and ideas of a broad range of CWP staff. We did this because we knew that we wanted to make a clinically useful tool. What came out of this was a very robust framework that can be applied across a range of settings. It was in fact suggestions from ward staff that got us to step back from the typical goal-based outcomes loop of planning and review and to recognise the importance of goal setting in the first place. With our model and the idea that it was going to be an image-based card resource, the next stage was to hand it over to the service users which is what I'm going to do now, and let them explain how they're involved and how the resource is used. Big round of applause. Hi, I'm Becky. We're involved in looking at the language used on the cards and changing keywords to make sure the users could understand them. We played the weirdest games of Pictionary to help understand the images. It was a bit odd, but it got us all talking and thinking of ideas. Hi, I'm Bella. We also looked at the style of the designs because we wanted it to be something that people of all ages would want to use. We wanted something bright and appealing and made suggestions about the use of colour. We also recommended that just the key words be used on the back of the card for older young people, anyone that finds the images distracting. Hi, I'm Derek. We also looked at how well the results could be used. As a parent, I could see straight away the benefits this approach could bring. As parents, we can often get stuck with seeing a situation only from one point of view. What the cards do is help you look at alternative solutions, help you to explore other ways forwards. They also stay with you, making it easier to remember what you have talked about and what you are going on to do. From, from a young person's point of view, the cards get you involved talking about yourself straight away without having any worries. 
There are 52 cards in total, split into different groups that are used at different times in the next step process. There are 12 life cards and these are mainly used to help you set your goal at the start. Like all cards in the next step resource, these are open to interpretation. <coughs> One of the exercises just gets you to sort the 12 life cards into red, what you are finding hard, amber, what's not an issue, and green, what are your strengths. This simple exercise helps you to see more clearly what's on your mind and what you might want to set as a goal. The traffic light cards are part of the position cards. This set of cards allows you to use the resource in lots of different ways and they're all about helping you to understand where you're at. OK, so once you have your goal, what's the next step? Well next, you lay out all the cards 1 to 10, with 10 being your goal. You have to choose where you think you are on the journey towards it. In this example, the person sees themselves at being at 4. You'd now agree a target for when you next meet your cams worker. You then have a choice of 18 step cards, each one has a different keyword and image. You can use these cards to build a staircase of steps and what you'll think will help you move towards your target number. You can get to talk about your choices and what they mean to you. Your ideas are then recorded onto the special record sheets that come with the resource so that you can review your progress. The staff handbook has lots of detail on how to use the resource and ideas from young people for making the sessions as fun and involving as possible. So explain this a bit more, I'll pass you back to Fiona. Okay, so this brings us up to date, um, and we're now about to roll out training um, for the Next Step resource across the whole of CWP. Um, we have 100 packs um, that we want people to take away with them. Um, it's just within CWP at the moment, but we're hoping that maybe next year um, we would like to take this forward. Um, I'm very proud to announce as well um, that even before today's official launch, um, everybody's hard work has been recognised, not just by me and the senior management team here at CWP, but by the Health, Health Service Journal, um, who have shortlisted us as part of their prestigious awards programme. So um, we'll be going down to London later on this month and see how we get on. <laughs> as I said, um, as soon as we've had a chance to integrate this resource into what we do here at CWP, we feel that with such a powerful and yet easy to use product, we need to get it out there and share this innovative way of working with as many people as possible. If you're interested in finding out more, come and see us at the back of the room after this presentation. That was the Next Step resource. Thank you for listening.